But afterwards, I just saw a picture of Stalin, and it was in a photo when my sister is with my parents is in the same park, and on the background there, so it couldn't be in 1956. So it took quite a long time to figure out that the monument was displaced in 1962. And then I found a very interesting book written by the son of the first secretary of that time, uh, Nikita Zarubia, and uh, his son was explaining in a very detail how did it happen. Uh, Armenia was the last capital who displaced the monument of Stalin. The, I mean, the, from the capital. I mean, you know that the, uh, the statue of Stalin was just recently displaced in Gori. <laughs> but <laughs> the reason, the reason why he explained, he said that by that time, Zarubian already understood one thing: that uh, Moscow already lost the control, and the policy that Stalin was implying concerning like the regulation of the national questions, it doesn't work any longer. So countries, nations should get back to a certain kind of like the normal traditional forms of dealing with the neighbors. And as in 1956 there was a serious social upheavals in Georgia, in Tbilisi, Kutaisi, and Gori, because when uh, Khrushchev announced the crimes committed by Stalin, immediately in Tbilisi, in Kutaisi, and Gori, there started the upheaval on the nationalistic basis. Because uh, Georgians were uh, felt bad that uh, Stalin uh, was all of a sudden turned on 180 degrees, turned into a sort of a criminal, so the cult had gone. And uh, it took some time, like for a week, Moscow was silent. And in one week, they drove the forces and about 60 people, as I know, because I mean there are coming many different information, but, uh, 60 people were killed just in Tbilisi. And I just asked again, I'm using uh, again uh, uh, the sources, my friends, to figure out about this world history. Um, and there is one thing that I also learned about it, which was really shocking for me, and I would highly appreciate if uh, you could help me just to verify this information. Because, as I learned, uh, in a one week, when it was a silence that Moscow wasn't responding, the subject of confrontation has shifted, changed. All of a sudden, that came another subject to separate from Soviet Union. For me, it was a really surprising news that in 1956, after defending the cult of Stalin, the discourse could so radically just make a twist towards separation from Soviet Union. And after that, things are becoming quite logical. You know, how though this information need a verification. But things are becoming quite logical that things that happened afterwards in Novocherkask where uh, Khrushchev suppressed the social uh, the demonstrations on a social base in a very uh, rude form. Later on, they decided to imply another policy, and that took place right after Khrushchev during the Brezhnev period. Take under control very simply the very delicate national questions which were suppressed during Stalin period, but afterwards they had a potential to explode. 
And in 1965, that took place in Armenia. Usually, it is also imprinted in the social memory in Armenia. When you talk about 60s, one thing, people, they have first like a very, uh, like a spontaneous euphoria. They, it creates a very positive sense. But afterwards, when you ask, what do you remember from 60s? And they said, ah, there was the demonstrations in the 60s. And the demonstration one in 1965, in April, for April 24, it was the big demonstration of, uh, a big demonstration uh, of students, of uh, uh, working class, of intelligentsia, which was like the leading the demonstration. And the first time it was the commemoration, the 50th year of commemoration of genocide of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. And it was in April 24. I went to the archives and figured out that the... And then in 1967 the memorial was built. It's, it's an incredible short period of time for Soviet period to, to build such a huge memorial. But when I went to the archives, I figured out that the competition was announced not after the demonstration, but in January. So it was a sort of a policy and it wasn't, it couldn't happen without the sanction of Moscow. You, you realize that. But here we're confronting with another interesting phenomenon. How the paradigm was shifting and how the state system taking under control already fragmenting <laughs> Soviet Union and the national question was of course the most peculiar and the most national dangerous question and now I'm going again so the phenomena of forgetting of the collective amnesia is one of the most interesting aspects of that. And I just want to make the comparisons of the collective amnesia or like the forced amnesia that taking place today. So I asked Lali today to help me and to uh, bring me the photo of the monument of 26 Babu Commissars. It is uh, another, also another story connected with the dispute that we had yesterday. Because, uh, as I said yesterday, I, as I commented yesterday, Caucasus used to be an exile place for uh, Tsar Russia. And all the revolutionaries are coming here, and then you can imagine it was a super situation, like the traveling between Tbilisi, Baku and Yerevan, talking about the revolutionary ideas, organizing different sort of like the... Uh, activities, organizing terroristic acts, organizing sabotages, different sort of things. So the revolution, in fact, was really uh, nurtured on this ground. And what is interesting thing, when uh, in 19, uh, well, the moment when uh, the First World War erupted and it was also already clear that, this, uh, that the Russia is collapsing, Ottoman Empire was collapsing, the nations which had lost their nation states and were coming to just reassert themselves, like to reconstruct those nation-states, 